may participate and talk, but anything they say is not an official proposal, I make an official proposal. Uh, and we're here today to discuss your letter you, one of your letters you sent, the last one, June 27th. So we're here today. So uh, you want to kind of go through that, I guess identify any of the impacts that you're concerned about that if we decide not to staff certain hours of the day stations? Uh, yeah, in addition to reducing staffing, total staffing. Um, well, we do have this here. Um, I'd like you to look over real quick, just in case the possibility of avoiding uh, bargaining over this issue. Staffing levels is a right, management right under the statutes, and we're not sure. going to give that up okay. uh, to do that. Uh, we'll be glad to bargain uh, any impacts that you can identify if we right. decide to move forward. And uh, I kind of thought maybe that's what the answer would be, so I just thought I'd try. Nice try, but, case, but we can't give up that right. <laughs> all right. In that case, uh, taxpayers may not like that ultimately. I have three copies of this. Here's the original. All right. And this is an article we're proposing that identifies the issues in there and how we would like to uh, go about handling the issues if you're going to continue to stand by the reduction in staffing. This is all supporting documents for that NIST study on fire ground, residential structure fires, um, NFPA 1710 recommendations, and your very own mini budget presentation. what you mean what do you mean by the first section one this is what they were or what you what's that so what are you saying in section one to be clear I'm not really quite clear what are you what are you saying there what do you mean with that okay. section we're saying that when we sign and agree to the last collective bargaining agreement the staffing level per shift was what it's laid out here in this article, or this section. Okay. And? So what are you saying with this? is what it was with section one still yeah yeah we're saying when we signed the contract that's what it was so we're saying now you're reducing the staffing so in order to in order to compensate the people that are left on duty when you reduce the staffing and it goes into section two okay you know I just didn't know what you meant by okay. one you're just outlining the condition I yeah, think right, there yeah. was some yeah, other says, meaning to it you know no, I was just no, trying to figure no, out no, what it's basically what you, Okay, it's it just sets up the whole article. All right, it's just it's kind of the preamble to tell you what's what. Okay, yes, yes. all right. 
That's all I'm trying to get. It's yeah, just like, <laughs> what does it mean other than it's just yeah, outlining what you, where you once were? Yeah, Your conditions. current conditions. Right. I understand. Okay. Yeah, I got you. When it says <laughs> section one, it made me think that was kind of like proposal or something. Right. Oh, no. no okay. Yeah, when a proposal. Okay. And obviously anything like that can be clarified if it's an okay. issue. Okay. Okay. I just all, yeah. just making sure so I didn't later come back and misconstrue it. Mm -hmm. you do that because if you so, if you because you currently have reductions now training so well, if somebody goes to training they're going to get y'all going to give a one percent for what we already do today we're not including training in there and the, the reason that we don't include training is because those people are still on duty they're subject to call back if there is a large event and they are home unavailable they're on duty still and they're still available to respond. But if somebody didn't show up to work today, mm -hmm. they're not here either. But so it's filled with overtime. Pardon? It's filled with overtime. What do you mean with overtime? Well, if it's not filled with overtime, right. so, but what, how would you distribute this? Because I'll just make up a station somewhere out, uh -huh. somewhere and out and, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody doesn't mm -hmm. show up and it's a two person station and they say, well, we'll move the other one somewhere else. The whole organization gets 1%. In that case, you're down by one per person, yeah, and you've browned out a station also. You've done two so things. Why would, the, why would somebody over in, say if it's on the other side, of, over here on the west side, why would somebody on the east side who's not impacted get anything? Well, because they may be at any given time because it, they might be the next day. They may work overtime at that station. The person might not But that's the next day. Anything. We're talking about the day is happening. Why would they okay. get money I, for the day is happening? Because if there's a fire big enough, it could be a wildfire or whatever, in that area, any station in our county is subject to being called to that fire. If they're called to that fire, they're down one less person or three less people or however many you reduce the staffing by, thus they're working with less people. They're doing more work, it's more dangerous, and they have less people. How are they doing more work? They're less doing people on the scene. If there's job. less people to do, if there's a certain job that needs to be done and you have 10 people to do it, if there's only eight, they're going to do, do more work and harder work because there's only eight of them than if there was 10. And, if, and our main concern is the safety. That's our main concern. And there's another side of that coin, too. Is yeah. Say you have 10 people there now and you have 10 people then after this event, you're going to be left with less people to respond to the calls that are available yep. after that event. So, I mean, it, it affects everyone not just the response. For instance, if you have station X, Y, and Z, and you were to brown out station Y, stations X and Z have a bigger area of coverage at that point where they're basically picking up the calls for station Y. And that gets in a lot to the safety aspect of it because <coughs> it's you, a long But you have it now, and that's okay. When you do your training, that's okay. But if we, don't, we do it for overtime, it's not okay. We didn't say it's okay. We said that the training, first of all, the training has been going on for as long as I've worked here. So it's a little bit late to demand a bargain over that because it's been going on like that. Uh, this reduction in staffing and this browning out stuff is a new thing. So we, we did not feel it was appropriate to let it go. And right here, I'll give you this in just a second. We have the 2009 roster of this department. And it shows almost three people at every fire station. And now, then we have the current roster, not the current, but before this reduction in staffing occurred, which I asked Chief to please bring me a copy of. And there's two people at every station, three at some of the, or two people at certain ones, three at some of them, and then four at uh, 44. Um, right here from County of Lucia, Florida Budget Workshop, May 15, 2006, <coughs> Mr. Deneen is in here talking in the meeting. 
Mr. Deneen stated, fire services shows a 30% increase, which reflects an estimated addition of 49 positions to increase the staffing in order to maintain a three-person station average and avoid single firefighter response. He added, it will also help align the county staffing with the municipality staffing, enabling the county to better negotiate first response agreements. If it was okay then, or it wasn't okay then for a single firefighter response or not having the first response agreements, why is this so okay now? And that was 06, that was seven years ago. Our budget problems have been going on for 